Welcome to Under the Big Tree. Today we are doing a tutorial on the Catgirl Synth 359 8 stage sequencing programmer. This is the sequencer that comes as part of the LB Designs Swamp panel. It is a Serge inspired and Serge compatible for you banana jack sequencer for use in the LB Design system. But of course, it can be mixed and mashed with any other Serge modules that you might have. The 8-stage sequencing programmer is an all-analog, fairly simple design. We have 8 stages of voltage and 4 different channels. For each stage, we can set the voltage for each of the 4 different channels. In addition, every time we get to a certain stage, an output pulse is generated from this yellow jack here. Any time a pulse is received at this red jack input, the sequencer will automatically go there. We have LEDs on the bottom that show the current stage, and pushing any of the buttons will automatically move the sequencer to that stage. So while it's rudimentarily something that's moving forward continuously in time, it's actually fairly random access and it becomes relatively straightforward to jump around within the sequencer to approach different aspects of it. Okay, so let's summarize what the controls are for each stage of the sequencer. We're taking a look here at stage one. We have the voltage setting for channel A, voltage setting for channel B, voltage setting for channel C, and the voltage setting for channel D. Then we have a trigger output. This generates a pulse every time we get to this stage. Then we have a trigger input, and sending a pulse into this trigger causes the sequencer to go back to that stage. Below that we have a light that tells us which one is the currently selected stage, and then we have a manual push button that causes the sequencer to jump to whatever stage you press. Now let's take a look on the other side here. These are the four inputs and outputs that are global to the sequencer. So first here we have step right. So putting a pulse into the step right connection will cause the sequencer to move to the right. Once it gets to the end, of course, it loops around and starts again. Then we have step left. Putting a pulse into there causes the sequencer to move to the left. Then we have this all events jack right here. So every time the sequencer moves to a new stage, it outputs a trigger pulse from the all events jack. Finally, we have this last jack here, common, which outputs a voltage as long as you are pushing down on a button. Okay, that's all the theory behind the sequencer. Now let's actually put it to work and see what it can do, building on it layer by layer. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, is get the sequencer moving. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna take the pulse output of an LFO and put it into the step right. And as soon as I do that, we can see that it starts moving. I can adjust the rate of the pulse and go very quickly or very slowly. Now let's take one of the channels and put it into an oscillator. So I'm gonna turn up an oscillator. And then I'm gonna take the channel A voltage output and put it into the one volt per octave input of the oscillator. And there we go. Now I'm gonna hold down this button and as long as I do, it's overriding the pulse input and it's just sitting there. So this is super useful because I can use it to tune my sequence. which is pretty great. But now let's actually go through and tune the sequence a couple of notes at a time because that makes it a little easier to tune it up. So in order to do that, 
I'm gonna take the output, the pulse output that happens right here when we get to stage two, and I'm gonna plug it into stage one. So what happens now is we're permanently staying on stage one because as soon as it wants to go to stage two, the pulse output goes back into stage one and causes it to go there. Now, I'll move it to three, and this allows us to be able to just tune these two notes. So by using this technique, we can go along and tune the whole thing. So in addition to being useful to allow us to tune different pieces of the sequence, we can also use this technique to set the time signature. It doesn't have to have eight stages. We can make it have seven stages. Or five stages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which is a lot of fun. Now, let's make the sound a little bit more interesting. So what we will do, I have taken this voltage output and I'm splitting it and putting it into the one volt per octave input of another oscillator. So just like we do on many synthesizers, let's turn that one up as well. And get a nice big beating kind of sound. Okay, so now let's start making our sound a little bit more interesting. One of the beautiful things about modular, of course, is that voltage is voltage. We're using this sequencer currently, one channel of it, to generate the pitch of that pair of oscillators, but we can use it to control anything else we want as well. So why don't we go and use another channel here, channel C, to control a low pass filter that we are running those two into. So I've got this going into the voltage control input of the low pass filter. Now let me start bringing down the basic default frequency cutoff. And now we have an interesting rhythm going. because channel C is opening and closing the filter a little bit. Okay, now we've got the sound going through the filter, so we have the sequencer opening and closing the filter with the different stages. Now, instead of it just being a continuous sound, let's run it into a VCA and then trigger an ADSR envelope to be able to give us a little bit more shape to it. So I've already done that off camera, and here is our connection for the pulse. And if we plug it into any of these, we can see that it'll just trigger when the sequencer gets to that point. But if we plug it into all events, now we have it triggering every time that the sequencer goes to another step. Now, it's a little bit boring to just hear the thing moving back and forth in a very static way like that. One of the things that is so cool about this sequencer is the fact that we can separately control step right and step left. So just for fun, I'm going to take another LFO pulse output, which is operating at a different rate, and I'm going to put it into the step left control. And now the two pulses are fighting against each other to create something completely different. And as I change the rate of that second LFO, we can actually move the sequence backwards as well as forward, depending upon which of those two LFOs runs faster. OK, 
Okay, so what do we do now to make our patch a little bit more interesting? Well, why don't we use the sequencer to bring in another voice? In this case, we'll bring in a bass voice to be able to work in addition to that other melody. So I have another oscillator set up, and this oscillator is running into the same VCA and the same ADSR, so all of them are triggering at the same time. Let's bring that one up by itself. You can hear it pulsing along, you can hear sort of the ratcheting happening as the step left fights every once in a while against the step right. So now, let's go in and uh, change its pitch, and we're going to do that by using channel D. Very sort of Tangerine Dream Berlin School sounding. So that's cool, but it's a pretty dark sound. So how do we want to control that? Well, let's go along and we have it plugged into a Serge triple wave shaper. Why don't we go and use our final channel here, channel B, to be able to control the triple wave shaper. And again, give us little bits of timbral shifts on different pulses. Pretty cool. All right, now let's bring in our original oscillators again. So that gives you some idea as to what we can do with something like this eight-stage sequencing programmer. Thanks a lot for listening, and I hope you learned something. Uh, as always, if you like what we're doing here on Under the Big Tree, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.